Hey everybody, my name is Jeff Bull, Manager of Developer Advocacy. And I'm Oren Brigg, the Product Manager for Meraki's Developer Platform and Ecosystem. Awesome. Oren, it's good to have you here, buddy. And I, you know, I say that because we've been trying to connect with each other for a long time. Um, through both of our journeys at Cisco, working here, doing a lot of things kind of surrounding the idea of DevNet for a number of years. It's really good, to, I really appreciate being here. Um, and I wanted to talk a bit about like your background, like give you a chance to really kind of talk about how you got to where you're at today because you know, of all the conversations we have in this media zone and here in DevNet, it's a lot of technical stuff, which is fantastic. We have a lot of tech talks, lots of interviews, we're really trying to teach. And I think it's important it's really important to share the human side of all these stories because at the end of the day, every single person sitting in the theater and the spaces behind us right now are people before they're anything else. And so I really wanted to ask you, kind of as a starting point, what got you excited about, you know, kind of getting in your journey to get to the position you're in now? What sort of got you excited when you started working at Cisco to even consider going down this path towards like you know, programmability or what have you? Okay, that's a, that's a great question. And Without sounding too biased, I must say it's uh, thanks to thanks to DevNet. I've been an SE at Cisco, and in our internal sales kickoffs, you'd see the DevNet zone, you'd see the atmosphere there, and just it looks like something interesting, something you'd like to be a part of. And I started to just, uh, or I looked around. I didn't get any. I did. I have zero experience in coding. Uh, moving along, uh, Pascal in the in high school, which. Mm -hmm. yeah. Agent, and um, and then at some point we wanted to run a DevNet. Some people wanted to run a DevNet Express session at the Israeli office, and I said, and they were looking for proctors for volunteers. I said, hey, I'll, I'll go for it, and I knew nothing. It was or it was a complete, or in my opinion, it was a complete mess. For I wasn't able to help anyone, but just going through that, I realized the potential and the uh, the potential and the the number of tools that this could give me as an engineer to solve problems I wasn't able to before. And then I just started very slowly investing some time in learning it, getting an understanding of the, all these API calls and how to use them. And at some point, I was just playing around. I found the first actual task, maintained task I wanted to automate. Mm -hmm. And I started creating a Python script to do that. And then I and then I had an, another task, another task, and another one, and another one. I kept on learning and investing. It just it was so exciting. Once again, once you unleash the potential, you see how much time you can save and what what's the potential, what you can do. I just it got me. The more the more I play with it, the more I wanted to learn, and it became an and like an endless resource pool. I, I really appreciate hearing that for a number of reasons. The one that strikes me the most is I, I was talking to a, a group of folks here earlier, and I was reminded of, this wasn't my analogy, but I was reminded of kind of an analogy or a way of describing this where, you know, if you need to go to, like in the States, we're kind of obsessed with going, the United States, we're kind of obsessed with going to, uh, you know, the gym to work out or what have you. Uh, but it's always hard, because like, we should do it, we want to be physically fit, we want to feel good about ourselves, but man, nobody really wants to go to this. Like, you don't want to go. The thought process I heard someone say is, don't think about Two things. Don't think about I need to go to the gym because I want to lose weight or this is an outcome. Think about how do you how does that workout make you feel afterwards? Like what is the endorphin rush that you get when you're done? Like, oh, okay, I feel satisfied. Focus on that. And I like that because it's very akin to what you described where for people that I've talked to who get like a, a little too much in their own head about I want to solve these big automation problems, whatever those things are for their company and their life, they're big. They're like, we want to automate the things. But then when you sit to try to do that, it feels so big and daunting. And especially, like you said, when you don't have a coding background, you go even to look at simple Python and you're like, I don't know what to do here. It can be, you can be so intimidated, you, you stop. And so you're right, your concept of, I did a thing and I got one thing done. Ooh, what could I, if I spent 15 more minutes, what could I do next? And then you do that and it creates a bit of momentum for you. I like that because it, it it's a, I would say it's a success story, not in the outcome. It's a success story in how to how to go down that journey for yourself. Um, that I think can motivate a lot of people when they hear that. Um, I hope so. To be honest, when I started, I ran, I, I ran, and I, I went with the DevNet uh, materials that we have. But uh, most of what I learned, I learned through DevNet, and then with Google searches for and and many, 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 many mistakes on the way, tri trial and error. When it was at the beginning, it was running an API call, getting result back. Running an API call, getting result back, and 
that wasn't challenging for me. That wasn't interesting because what I was missing is I was missing a mission, a target, something that I want to automate. So running a single API call, okay, nice. You can do that Postman, you can do it Python, you can do it, mm -hmm. but that's not interesting. When I had the when I thought about it, then I had my first maintain task, which is something with Cisco, working as SCA Cisco, usually we don't hardly have maintain tasks. Every day is a whole new day, which is very exciting on its own, <laughs> but, that, but for prog uh, programmability, you don't have, I don't operate the network. So I don't have this repetitive, repetitive mm -hmm. things to do. And when I finally found one, something repetitive, and all of a sudden, it wasn't just writing Python, just writing a script or writing a, uh, a single API call. It's I knew what I wanted to achieve. I knew through API I will be able to achieve it. And then, it's, then that gave me all the motivation I needed to get it done. You know, it, it's, I think that really is, that is the crux of it right there. For anything that we're trying to do, it's, it, I mean, it's in this case, speaking specifically of whether we use the terms programmability or automation or whatever it happens to be, you need to know where you're going. You, or you need to have a general sense of what you're trying to accomplish at the end of it. Now, we all have to, I think, be comfortable with the fact that we may start in one place and we want to end up, we think we want to end up here. We've got to be comfortable that path is going to change and diverge and whatever else. But I love that because what it means is it goes from being just a thought experiment where like, look, I executed a postman call and I got a response back. I mean, cool, that's fantastic. But what did that do for you? Like, where, where, did, where did it get you? So having like an actual problem you can solve, even if it was I, an example I gave to somebody earlier was from a customer interaction where the customer literally just, they thought it was a big deal. And then when it was shown to them in automation or in Python, they could do this really simply. They just really needed for a, a work process. Somebody had to copy a, a file from one folder to another in a Unix system just because an auditing group had to look at it every single day. And they were manually doing this every single day. And they just thought that that's what they had to do. And it wasn't until someone had said, well, no, I think we have another option. And they were open to it. And when they saw, oh my gosh, as soon as they saw that that one thing could be solved, it immediately opened up their mind that, wait, hold on, if we can do this, there's all these other things we had sort of dreamed of, but we just didn't think that was a thing we could ever do, so we, put, we just ignored it. Exactly. And it turned into, like, a year later, they had solved for all these other problems. And it, the group that did this for them, all they did was solve one thing in the beginning, and they were able to run with it from there. But but that's exactly the thing. That's the match that ignites that the potential yeah. of what now I, I've done that. What next? What now? Because once you get it to work, it's like oh, it's like reinventing fire or lighting a fire. It's like wow, what next? It's right. The immediate what next? What next? What next? So I want to I want to dig into that just a little bit. So you you were in sales. You and I got to know each other while you were in sales, and you're in a different role now. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about what that? like how this role is different, how, how it's sort of different for you and how you operate. But more importantly, I'm curious, what made you want to make this move? Make this move? True, that's an uh, that's interesting question and I uh, have an even more interesting answer for that. Thank you. When I was working on several all kind of programmability projects because all of a sudden I could, it changed some of my conversations with my customers, not around, it wasn't around what can our products do off the shelf, it was, what are you looking to achieve? And then it's not only what, I can, what a product can do and what can I do to automate that product and do stuff and tailor it to the exact use case, which is not almost, but exactly the use case they're looking for. And through those conversation, I started, or it took me time to realize it, I was doing the work of a product manager. I was having this conversation about, the not the product, but the challenges we want to achieve mm -hmm. And I was thinking, how can I technically do that using probability and not only the, the feature that we have on the product? And that got me, at some point, that got me excited about doing more, more of that. And, um, and at that point, that got me uh, to start thinking about uh, transitioning into product management. And I did a few projects, I, I gained some experience in that. And at some point, I, uh, I, decided, uh, I decided that I would leverage a different transition I was going through to transition into a product management role. And I, um, I applied for a product ma management role. I made my case through the project I had done and the, the fact that I was able to show what are the reason, what are the capabilities and the experience I have done, which do not include official uh, product management experience on my resume, but I have all of these tools and all these skills, all of the things I've done that I think would make me a good product manager. 
And luckily enough, the Meraki product management team has decided to put their faith in me and take, uh, take a leap of faith with me. And here I am your as story, a product manager. I love that. Your story is, um, I think, is a really good example of what a pivot in your life can look like. The, the word pivot got used a lot during the pandemic when people were like, well, I'm going to pivot and go do this thing over here or do this thing over here. And it's true. But I think it's really interesting to hear a, a human example of what pivoting can look like because it isn't literally I'm on a fulcrum and it's here and I'm, the next day I'm doing something different. It, it's something that takes some time. You have to go through some like discovery to get there. But it's great because to your point, you found that it's not that you didn't like what you were doing before, but you found that you had this passion that could really be directed very fervently into something new and different for you. And I think that that's a good, for anybody watching, that's a really good analogy or a metaphor for why looking at learning sort of developer tools and methodologies, it's not the automation. It's not the things you can get by learning these technologies. It's what learning these technologies does for how you view what you're working with, how you view the problems that are in front of you, so that you have like new ways of saying, I think I have a different way to solve this, either in your own personal life, in technology, whatever yeah, happens to be. I, I completely agree. I think, again, I, I'm an engineer, or you can you can switch titles, but I, I'm an engineer in, in the soul. And for me, just programmability opened up a whole new set of tools yeah. to solve more problems that I wasn't able to do before. So that was own. So for me, it led to a career change. Mm -hmm. But uh, if in other cases, just I was able to help my customers solve problems I couldn't have before. Yep. So that's amazing. And, and it's so satisfying. And I think the aspect which I'm not sure if we talk about it enough is the community. I met, I met a few, uh, a couple of hours ago, I met here someone to take one of the projects I created, which is called Vanilla Ice, turn it into something completely different that fit their needs of their company. They renamed it, they call it Thin Ice, which is cute. And they created something completely different. And they, he told me, it was watching my project all of a sudden get that, uh, get that click that, wait, we, we don't need to settle for what we have out of the box. We can, just, we can adjust, we can do that. So I, I'm so humble and uh, I'm so, I don't, I don't even have words to describe how um, happy I am to see someone actually getting inspired by this project and created a whole new, a whole new thing out of it. That's very cool. And that, that's an amazing feeling of satisfaction. I'm super happy to hear that. Or thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Uh, is there anything you want to leave the audience with before we wrap up? I think regardless career change or not, I would really look at look at DevNet, look at programmability, try, for the very least, try to automate some mundane things so that you have some more time. With that more time, you can either learn a, n a few more tools, learn a few more, spend some more time with the family, uh, lie down and rest, do whatever you want, but just really, there is a better way of doing things. And uh, it's worth it. Thanks, Oren. And thanks everyone for being here. Check us out at developer.cisco.com slash Cisco Live for all of our other content.